Well, one of the engines that we've talked about a fair amount on this channel is the Cadillac HT4100, the hook and tow, well, really the high technology 4.1 liter V8 engine. It was offered in Cadillacs from the 1982 through 1987 model year. And suffice it to say that those HT4100s had myriad problems associated with them. Most commonly intake gaskets, which would then leak coolant into the oil and cause overheating, which would then blow the head gaskets. The head bolts weren't all that strong. The overall use of RTV sealant in a number of areas of the engine as opposed to gaskets created challenges. There are just quite a few issues with that HT4100 and it really didn't make much power or torque and it was dropped in 4,000 plus vehicles like the Seville's and the full-size rear wheel drive DeVille's and Fleetwood's. But amazingly, as time marched on, Cadillac really refined that HT4100, making some changes to the block in the 1985 model year but then in 1988, Cadillac introduced the 4.5 liter throttle body injected V8 that made 155 horsepower up from around 125 to 135, depending upon the application in which the HT4100 was employed. The 4.5 was really a drastic improvement over the 4.1 liter V8. And frankly, it was quite reliable by comparative standards. It really had licked the intake gasket issue and for the most part, the head gasket issue as well. Of course, by this time, GM had determined it was optimal to include what they called coolant supplement tabs to the cooling system that really helped plug any leaks in the event they were to start in the head gaskets or intake gaskets. But beyond that, the 4.5 liter V8 just was a pleasant V8 overall. The throttle body injection system was very reliable, and the engine held together quite well. Now, as the years went on, the 4.5 liter throttle body injected V8 went from producing 155 horsepower in the 1988 model year to 180 horsepower in 1990 when it was outfitted with port fuel injection. Now, along the way, the 4.5 liter V8 also did get some massaging, as did the 4.1 liter V8 if it were in the Elantes. The 4.1s in the Elantes made 170 horsepower, up from the 125 to 135 I mentioned before. And the 4.5 liter V8s made 200 horsepower, up from either the 155 in throttle body form or the 180 in port fuel injected form. And that was really because they employed a special intake and intake runners on that Elante version. The Port Fuel Injection 4.5 liter V8, again, a very good engine, but really the pinnacle of this HT4100 4.5 or 4.X liter engine family, if you will, came in 1991 when Cadillac introduced the 4.9 liter Port Fuel Injected V8 that made 200 horsepower and 270 pound-feet of torque. This engine would be used by Cadillac from 1991 all the way through 1995 in the DeVilles, and it really was a great engine and reliable engine by many standards, let's say, of the time. And quite a few would argue that it was far more reliable than the North Star engines, which tended to have, yes, you guessed it, head gasket issues as well. I guess a common theme here. But the 4.9, just like the 4.5 and the 4.1 that preceded it, was an aluminum block iron head engine. And yes, I said that right, aluminum block iron head engine. And aside from making a lot of torque, which really was this engine's strong suit, it had a decent amount of horsepower. You have to remember that in the early to mid 90s, cracking 200 horsepower was actually a pretty big feat. There weren't many cars that did that outside of the performance car spectrum. And the great thing about the Cadillac 4.9 V8 is it really made all its power down low. In fact, the engine really runs out of breath after about 4,500 RPMs. And if you have one of these engines in an automatic transmission car, it shifts at about 5,000 RPM and no higher. Off the line, if you were to floor a North Star equipped DeVille concourse, as an example, versus a regular DeVille with this 4.9, up to 60, there's really not much of a difference in terms of the 0 to 60 times. In fact, magazine tests of the 270 horsepower equipped DeVilles showed a 0 to 60 time of 7.98 seconds, and for the 4.9 liter V8 engine, 8.3 seconds. So despite 70 horsepower of difference, the 4.9 really got off the line pretty well.
It also went about its work quietly and I would say relatively smoothly. It wasn't an overly smooth V8. You weren't going to, let's say, confuse it for a Lexus 4-liter V8 of the era, but it was smooth enough. And like I said, it delivered power reliably, unlike some of the other higher technology engines that GM had, including the North Star. A number of items on these 4.9 V8s were relatively easy to service. The tune-ups weren't too bad. The front and the back cylinders, you could get it relatively easily. The back was a little bit more challenging, and you often had to use some more specialized tools to do that, but it was fine overall. Alternator, obviously, a high power steering pump up high. The serpentine belt was easy to replace. Fuel injectors, easy to replace. And that was good because they actually tended to fail on these and the engine would run rich, which would then clog some of the EGR tubes that were in the intake. You had to clean those out periodically if that were to happen and your fuel mileage would degrade. The EGR valve was also easy to service right on top there in the intake. The oil filter location on these was pretty interesting as opposed to being on the bottom side of the engine. Oil filter and the oil filter adapter is actually located on the top side of the engine on the driver's side. And I guess that's good and bad. I never found it hard to replace on these, so it worked just fine. The oil filter is upside down so you can fill it up with oil before you restart the engine. Now I will say there are some challenging service procedures on these engines. Most notably, the water pumps are an absolute bear. There's just not much room to work with. You often have to move the air conditioning accumulator out of the way. And even still, there's, I think, somewhere between 15 and 20 different bolts or nuts or Torx head bolts. It's just, well, very challenging. And of course, it's always the last one that you get that's kind of seized and gives you some trouble. Uh, this is not a fun job on these engines, and I would say it's probably best left to a mechanic if you have an issue. Otherwise, you are going to have a lot of skinned knuckles. But I think that's really the worst of the repair jobs on these 4.9 liter V8 engines. As I said, you may also encounter fuel injector issues, but that's a relatively easy repair, though it can be costly because injectors are pretty pricey on these. Um, sometimes you can find NOS ones online. EGR valves are also a common repair item. I will say another common issue is that these engines have unintended acceleration in some cases where once the car gets to about two miles per hour, the idle speed is governed by the throttle position sensor. And it really sets it to two degrees of throttle above uh, two to five miles per hour. And so if the throttle position sensor is misadjusted, it is an adjustable throttle position sensor, what happens is then once you hit that two to five miles per hour, the car kind of takes off on its own. And I've actually owned a number of these where I bought them and they would coast at 25 miles per hour until I readjusted the throttle position sensor. So if you're encountering that issue, the best thing you can do is enter the diagnostic mode on these cars by pressing the off and warmer buttons on the climate control panel and holding them. Then you wait for a little bit until I believe 0 0.7.0 is displayed on the display. Then you hit the low button, which enters the diagnostic mode where you can view engine sensors. And then you step toward number one, sensor number one, hit the high button, and it should say P.0.1. And then that'll give you throttle position sensor reading. And if you see that your throttle position sensor, just when the car is off or the car is running and you're at idle in park is reading a negative number, you're probably gonna be a candidate for that unintended acceleration scenario. You wanna get it around zero, I would say, if you are trying to cure that issue. And you might have to mess around a little bit with it. Throttle position sensor, you can just loosen the two little screws that hold it in place and move it back and forth and try something. But like I said, if it's reading a negative number, when it's in park at idle, try to move it up to around zero and start there. And you can continue adjusting it toward higher numbers, like a one as an example, if you still have the issue. If you adjust it too far though, when you coast down, the car is gonna stall because the computer will not command enough throttle for the engine. Another issue that some of these 4.9 engines may have and you wanna look out for is a main bearing knock. And 
you know, some people say it's a benign knock, but I would say if you have a choice of getting an engine that has a knock and one that doesn't, I would pass on the one with the knock. I've seen these engines go for many, many miles, but some of them, for whatever reason, that main bearing knock creeps in, and you just want to be aware of that. So listen for it, particularly when the engine is warm and you're taking one for a test drive. Other than that, there really aren't too many issues with this engine, maybe some oil leaks, but you know that's something that is more typical at higher mileage. And overall, I would say that Cadillacs equipped with this 4.9 engine are really, really nice to drive, particularly the 1991 to 1993 DeVille. I just find those are a little bit lighter than the 1994 and 5 DeVilles, especially in coupe form where they're on the shorter 110.8 inch wheelbase versus a wheelbase that's three inches longer for the sedans. They're really peppy. Those cars ride really nicely. It's kind of the last, as I've said in another video, last of the old school Cadillac. So if you're able to get a 4.9 liter DeVille from that era or Fleetwood, I think you're going to find a really nice car. And those still are pretty underappreciated in the marketplace. Hope you enjoyed this spotlight on the Cadillac 4.9 engine. And if you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you. Thanks again for watching.